We're talking about that rise in the off-gem energy price cap. The average household utility bill from October will be going up from £1,971 to £3,549, a huge 80% increase reflecting rising wholesale energy prices on European markets, not least in the aftermath of the war in Ukraine. The government's now announced some assistance a few months ago, including £400 for all households off their energy bills, and then another £650 for the 8 million most vulnerable house- households on certain qualifying benefits, including pension, credit and universal credit. We'll continue to discuss this until 3 o'clock. But for now, also, there's widespread concern that many firms across the UK's hospitality industry, which contributes mightily to the UK economy, employing one in ten of the workforce, are now on the brink of collapse. With price rises in food, inflation and, of course, soaring energy bills, many of our much-loved restaurants, cafes and pubs in particular are facing closure. Hundreds of locals have already shut their doors over recent years off the back of lockdown and then the spiralling bills. And given the millions employed across hospitality and the importance of the sector, not just to our economy, but our broader well-being, isn't it time that something was done? I'm joined now by Darab Rezai. He's chairman at Hartlepool Licensing Association. He's written an open letter to the government calling on for more support for the hospitality industry. Darab Rezai, great to have you with us, joining us from the northeast there, from Hartlepool. Now, of course, as everyone who watches and listens on the money for weeks knows, there is no energy price cap for business. So the small businesses that you represent, that you're involved in in your local community, you are fully sure. exposed, aren't you, to this spiralling rise in wholesale gas prices. I'm sure some of the pubs in your locality are experiencing fuel bill increases of three, four, even five-fold. Thank you so much for inviting me, Liam. The first thing I would like to know, why a businessman like myself can write a letter to the Boris, to leaders of every party, and asking for help and support on 10th of August and nobody else had done anything about it. They just started talking about it. That's not good enough. I have been in hospitality for 45 years. I have never, ever seen it so bad. I have been through the miners' strike. I have been through two uh, credit crunch, and we have also got through COVID. And what has happened is, sadly, after the COVID, we have had the price increase, we have had the fuel increase, and now we have got the energy increase in a year by 300%. This is going to cripple the hospitality. And sadly, there's a lot of us who won't be there. We are employing a lot of people, and these people, once they've lost their job, they won't be able to get any job back. It's It's really frightening and we are begging everybody to do something about it the government needs to do something about it it's it's sitting talking about it even it's not enough we need two actions as soon as possible a short term and a long term the short term plan it should be supporting the industry the long term they have to deal with the energy companies because Margaret Thatcher privatized the energy, I'm sure, 100%. This is not what she had in mind. She thought opening the market would benefit everybody. Sadly, so far, it hasn't benefited anybody, but just the shareholder of the energy companies. We need support. We need help. On the 2019, £60 billion was given to the chancellor from hospitality. And we cannot ignore that. We are employing 10% of the working population. In a town such as Hartlepool, you know, they would never ever have a chance to work again. We need to do something. And I noticed four o'clock this morning, 
the Richard Tice, who's the leader of Reform Party, who's very close to Hartlepool, he started bringing some policy, talking about it, but I haven't heard anything from the lead, leader of Labour Party, and I've heard a good gesture from the two candidates, and I haven't heard anything at all from our Chancellor. It's interesting you mention uh, Richard Tice, uh, Dara Breza. He's actually going to be live on the money in the next hour as part of our two-hour special, bringing forward his ideas for energy reform, not least for the business sector. I said at the top of this show that I'm pretty gobsmacked that ministers and officials have allowed us to get to the point where the off-gem energy price cap is being announced without any inkling of additional support, given the anguish and anxiety this causes households. But there's no price cap for firms, is there? Catherine McBride here in the studio, a very experienced economist, she suggested that that 20% VAT that businesses pay on energy, that should be scrapped completely. Renewable subsidies that some businesses pay on their energy should be scrapped completely. I'd go further. What's your thought on this? I think we should also be giving businesses at least a holiday in terms of paying those business rates, rentals on, you know, taxes on the, 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 re the value of the properties and the equipment that they own. And I don't hear anything about that from ministers. What, what, we, what we need, we need financial support as soon as possible. Because what we are doing at the moment, we are dealing with price increases on all ingredients. Then we are dealing with the fuel increase. And now we are dealing with the price increase on the fuel which absolutely all the energies, we have to use gas and electric. With cafe, restaurants, they have to have their equipment on all the time. There's no way we can save anything at all. We are already doing everything we can. And a restaurant, he would pay average a restaurant between three to 400 pounds for their gas and electric. If it goes up by 300%, you're talking about £1,200 a week. That is going to be bigger than the rent, it's going to be bigger than the rate, and it's going to be bigger than all the other overheads they have. So I believe there is a lot of middle-aged and elderly people who are in hospitality. They would leave and there'd be nobody else who would open those venues. And we are going to end up with a lot of pubs cafes, bars, be closed. At the moment, the hospitality running on 50% because a lot of people during the COVID found other alternative jobs, working delivery drivers for various company, and they haven't come back on hospitality. And we are in a desperate, desperate situation, and we need help and we need support. I think our chancellor, as well as the two candidates, they should come on the media and tell us what they are going to do. Because I have actually heard and seen grown-up people crying because they are losing their business that they worked hard for 20, 30 years. Darren Breza, you know Hartlepool well. You've been operating as a business leader in the northeast on Teesside, as you say, for decades Hartlepool is the red wall, isn't it? The, the Tories famously held a seat, uh, took the seat off Labour and then held the seat in a by-election. If the Tories can't retain Hartlepool, they're going to lose power. What is this doing to the reputation of Hartlepool, of the Tories in the North East, Dara Brezai? We have had, they, they did support us during the COVID, which was positive. And if the Conservative Party, if they manage the Conservative Party and the government jointly, because we have got two candidates who are not at the moment, none of them is the Prime Minister. If they manage to support the working class people as they promised, and if they manage to do what they had said to do, they would keep their MPs on power. However, if they don't, I think it'd be a long, long time before they would get back again. 
I mean, Richard Tice. We must leave it there. D- Dara Breside, yeah. Chair of the Hartlepool Licensing Association. I've been delighted to talk to you. Fabulous to have you on the show. And I look forward to welcoming you back on the money very, very soon. Dara Breside there.